I am Connor. He is Hunter. And uh, you'll be like, Hunter, and I'll turn my head because I've just learned to answer <laughs> to our names. So to make things easier, I'm Er one and he's Er two. And that's just because I set foot in the building first, <laughs> even though he is older and technically the boss. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn couldn't find his construction people to come back to finish Ruby. And uh, when he talked to me about it, I'm like, you know, my brother just started his GC. He's probably got 10, 12 years of experience. Um, so I can hook you up with him and try to get it done for you. Because he's basically telling me the room's unusable and it's kind of a waste to have a whole room that's inoperable. Um, so they talked and he texted me and, and he's like, hey, uh, Saturday works for you. Swing over there, get it done. And I... This is like on a Thursday, so I was trying to do a quick turnaround. So I go into the ceiling, and I'm thinking it's just like, oh, cool, do the ceiling, get the room operable. And uh, Susan texts Hunter and is like, so when you guys finish with that, and sends him kind of this list of like, we need to refinish the hallway, we need to trim out Ruby, we need to throw on a coat of paint. And then for six months, it was just kind of a natural building of a relationship where um, Hunter and I are, you know, learning how Glenn thinks about things and learning more and more about sound and technical aspects because even though we both have almost a combined 17 years of experience, we've never done an acoustic room or, or something that's sound into this level. I remember sitting on the couch before the room got built and we he had told us about it, but we never visualized it or knew what the room was even gonna look like. And he's sketching on a clipboard and kind of going, I want the room to look like this. And uh, I'm like, okay, what what is that um and uh, it starts delving into the front wall looking like it's floating and the speakers popping out of the wall because the a big point for this dolby atmos room is he hadn't seen anybody build an atmos room that had speakers in every position look like they were integrated into the construction when we first started designing the room we sat down with glenn for hours we probably had days in this room looking around and figuring out what we wanted to cut out what we wanted to put in and he was sketching some stuff out on his clipboard and we kind of drew out what we wanted the front wall to look like and all these different crazy ideas and things we wanted to do around the room. And he finally drew out this picture of what we wanted the front speaker wall to look like based on the specs and the design and everything else. And we probably had about four or five drawings at that point. And we take the speaker wall, we put a piece of tape on it and we <laughs> stick it right there to the, to the center of the wall. And he looks at it and goes, all right, now build it. It was on to speakers framing as we like to call it, finish framing, which isn't a thing, um, but it is now. <laughs> yeah. And there was... When you wrap everything in spandex, you gotta make sure it looks right before you put yeah. fabric on it. Because you put you put a piece of stretchy fabric over any imperfection and it's it's gonna show through. So, first try? maneuver into place. <laughs> it was not first try, <laughs> it was multiple first, tries. First try? <laughs> My theory is people heal and materials don't. So if it's between like me and a material, like I don't want to have to replace a material. This is why he carries his own insurance. Yeah, carry my own insurance and my own first aid kit. Uh, but I blew through it pretty quick. And he's always warning me about like, he's like, dude, don't just, there's nails on the floor. Don't just like jump off. We just ripped up. There's a lot. And I'm like, dude, it's fine. Like, it's fine. Well, anyway, I jump off a ladder onto a two by four with a 16 penny sticking out of it and stick a, a nail through my my foot. Through the shoe into your foot. Through the shoe, through the rubber, into my foot. And I'm like, ooh, 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 ooh. And I sit down on the ISO like floor because it's raised. And I'm sitting there like a seat. And he's like, you good? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I take my shoe off and I'm anemic. So I'm bleeding like a stuck pig. And uh, Susan walks in. I think she's about to faint. I'm like, it's fine. I promise. Like, it's going to be okay. Put a piece of gauze on, bleed through. Put another piece of gauze on, bleed through. Wrap it up real tight. Stops bleeding. I'm like, cool, back to work. Um, <laughs> and that was one of many blood sacrifices to the room. Um, and I, I think the funniest one is I'm doing all the fabric and I put a pin nail and it curved through a knot or, or maybe it was behind my hand. I don't remember. And I stick a tiny little 18 gauge brad nail through my finger. Not much blood, a little bit of bruising. I'm telling him about it and he's giving me all this, all this crap. Be careful. I told you to be careful. And I'm like, it's fine. It was Stop an accident. Stop shooting yourself with nails. Stop shooting myself with nails. Next day, next day, couldn't write it. He comes in, he's nailing up the bass trap with me that goes over the center mix position. And he is using a bigger nailer, a 16 gauge nailer. 
and he sticks a nail through the two by four. It hits a knot and curves around and hits him in the finger and blood's everywhere. He's bleeding like crazy. And I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, be careful with nail guns. He's a logistics guy and I'm, I mean, he's obviously a craftsman and stuff too because we built this room together. Just us two swinging hammers and Glenn designing and Susan and the rest of the team at GAT giving design input and kind of directing us where we need to go. Um, but the one thing that neither of us or any of us really kind of knew how to do because it hadn't been done was integrating lights into a hardwood floor. And Glenn was like, why don't you just cut kind of every board as it goes when you're laying the floor and pre-install the track? And I'm thinking about it from a construction standpoint. And I'm like, well, if you do that, you can't control, you know, how the floor is going to end up level because it's perfectly flush all the way across. And he's like, we'll just cut them in after we lay the floor. And he goes, well, he'll cut them in after we lay the floor. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I can do that. No, no problem. I can Because if you mess it up, you're replacing an entire floor. Mm -hmm. um, or trying to figure out how to fix it, which isn't going to happen. And the best way to do it is to put the floor in first and then cut it. So you get one shot. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the many things that you get exactly one opportunity at. So I, I was like, listen, I'm not worried about it. I'm going to chalk everything out. I'm going to do 60,000 me 60, measurements and make sure that it's perfectly straight all the way down uh, and perpendicular to the, the hallway and everything. And then when, because I'm kind of holding it off because everybody's like, so when are you going to cut those floor lights in? Because everybody wants to see it. They want to see what it looks like because the floor disappears. It looks like you're stepping on a black hole when all the other lights are off. And it's a really cool look and Glenn made a great decision on designing it that way. But everybody wants to see it and I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do it because <laughs> I had to lay the floor so I don't want to have to replace it. And then finally we get to a point where there's nothing else to do. Like that day is, is floor cutting day. So I show up, I down an energy drink uh, and a cup of coffee and I put headphones in and I had pre-made a song list for it and I uh, shut the door and I told nobody to walk in nobody to scare me nobody to mess with me because I'm going to cut a perfectly straight line on four tracks so eight cuts and I go in and I put my headphones in and just Fort Minor remember the name starts playing <laughs> and then just from one shot all the way down I get the first one cut out they walk in they're looking at it it's dusty as all get out. And uh, Susan goes, is that crooked? And I was like, Susan, do not mess with me right now. I can't handle if you're messing. I was like, I promise it's straight. So anyway, we cut in the other three and we put the track in and Glenn walks in. And he's like, that looks sick. One thing we started saying about halfway through was man's reach often exceeds his grasp because <laughs> I don't think anybody knew what it was going to take to do this when we started. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> because Glenn told Rich that we were going to have it done in a month, which we tried so hard and then just realized it wasn't going to happen. And so we tripled that time frame and ended up to hit it. But uh, Rich said a month and he goes, uh, God, what did he say? He said, uh, he said, you're something about optimistic or I don't remember. But whatever he said, he said, you're optimistic or or something and Glenn said more like oblivious to challenges <laughs> you know we make everybody team shirts that say oblivious to challenges well the general rule of thumb in construction and engineering is take how long you think it's going to take to get the job done double it and then double it again <laughs> and that's about what it was yeah but it ended up to be a beautiful product and sound amazing and look absolutely ridiculous and kind of the whole goal that we had was I want people to look at this room and try to figure out how they built it <laughs>